speech I gave did not lead you towards the good side or the bad side effects of caffeine, then good, it wasn't supposed to. Therefore, you better double up on your caffeinated beverage because you will need to, again, stay alert and focused for the good news I have to share. I sent out a survey to you all and received insightful feedback and spent valuable time researching the benefits caffeine offers when you consume the same amount. There are various health benefits available from caffeine, but you must be mindful of how much caffeine you consume because those caffeine benefits could turn into serious health risks. And as you consume the survey from out, the majority of you did not get much. But by the end of this speech, I'm sure all of you will, and I will be going over some of the class favorites, coffee, energy drinks, and tea. Before explaining how caffeine will overall benefit you, I will refresh your minds so you can all maintain an understanding of what I will be speaking about. According to Harvard Men's Health Watch in the article, The Buzz About Caffeine and Health, caffeine is a natural stimulant. Its main effect is on the central nervous system where it can increase alertness and provide a needed boost when you are tired. Even this definition of caffeine expresses the positive effects it could have on all of us. Now that your memories of the definition and what caffeine does is resurfaced, I will remind you how it can increase your alertness and make you less tired. You may remember this picture from my last speech. It's from Caitlin Dow's article, The Best Part of Waking Up, Is Caffeine Helping or Harming Your Health? This picture again shows that adenosine can't attach to these receptors on the brain because you consume caffeine. So that therefore keeps us up and longer and energized longer. Since you are all refreshed on what caffeine is and how it works, let's go into why caffeine is overall great for you. I will be discussing over caffeinated beverages, but foods can contain caffeine as well. If you do not consume any form of caffeine, specifically caffeinated drinks, you should, or at least start to consider. According to Caitlin Dow, caffeine improves dopamine signaling in the brain, and loss of dopamine causes the movement problems that occur in Parkinson's disease. This binding of caffeine proves that serious health conditions could be prevented when the safe amount of caffeine is consumed, and I am assuming all of us would want to lower the risk of getting Parkinson's disease. Besides diseases, caffeine can also lower the risk of cancer. C. Musgrove found in his article, The Truth About the Bean, that you should not have to worry about the rumors of caffeine contributing to the development of cancer being true. In fact, studies have shown no connection between caffeine consumption and the development of cancer. You will be happy to hear that caffeine actually has protective characteristics against some cancers. Now, do not get too ahead of yourself with all these positive effects. I still need to cover what certain caffeinated beverages have to offer. Coffee, tea, and even energy drinks have more health benefits to offer than you may know. In the article, Another Benefit of Drinking tea, Green Tea or Coffee, the health, Harvard Health Letter informs, drinking green tea or coffee is associated with many health benefits, such as better cardiovascular health, lower inflammation levels, and a reduced risk for developing chronic disease. Along with lowering the risk of those I just listed, coffee and tea have crucial evidence found by researchers to lower the risk of premature death by comparing people who drank the lowest amount of caffeine to people who drank the highest. And people who drank the highest were found to have a lower risk with premature death. With these beneficial effects being offered, you should start drinking coffee or tea. However, coffee and tea are not the only caffeinated beverages that provide health benefits. In the article, caffeinated energy drinks improve high speed running in light field hockey players. The authors state, the form of energy drinks increased in the running distance covered at high intensity, sprint intensity, or both in male and female soccer players and rugby players. I know this information must be true because of the studies they ran on field hockey players consuming a certain amount of a, an energy drink before playing. As Juan Del Coso and his fellow colleagues concluded, run, running distance, body accelerations, and heart and sweat rate were nonetheless positively affected by the correct amount of caffeinated energy drinks. Since this study proves caffeinated energy drinks improve exercise performance, you athletes should consider drinking an energy drink 
a few hours before your game. However, I would recommend coffee or tea over energy drinks. Although I am listing an immense amount of beneficial effects caffeine has on our bodies, I am not saying you should be carefree about how much you consume. Having high doses of caffeine each day could have an everlasting effect on each and every one of you. I will now be talking about what these underlying health concerns could be, why you should care and what you can do, and an alternative if you have a coffee addiction. Caitlin Dow announces that roughly 85% of us drink at least one caffeinated beverage each day. To paraphrase, taking that percentage into consideration, caffeine takes about three to five hours to break down only half of it, so you must care about how much you consume. C. Musgrove explains that if you consume 10 or more cups of a caffeinated drink each day, you will be put at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, and this could also lead you to alcohol consumption, smoking, stress, and a poor diet, and even overdose if you are consuming too much caffeine. I hope this makes you all realize how crucially important it is to take your caffeine intake into consideration and keep yourself in check. And here are some steps you can take to maintain your caffeine intake. If you do not know how much caffeine you are able to consume, Caitlin Dow refers to a genetic test that looks at the gene for metabolizing caffeine, which will help you determine how much caffeine you can intake. That being said, if you already know how much caffeine you are able to consume, you don't need to be worried about testing. Just keep yourself in check and make sure you don't drink 10 or more cups of caffeine each day. Now, if you are a coffee lover like me and reach your maximum caffeine intake of the day, then you may want to look into this alternative. Rafaela Colombo, the author of An Outlook on the Role of Decaffeinated Coffee in Neurodegenerative Diseases, insists decaffeinated coffee is a great alternative due to the close similarity to caffeinated coffee. However, without the caffeine, you won't be as alert or focused which I'm sure all high schoolers long to have. By keeping in mind that there is a safe amount of caffeine you can consume each day, you will receive a bountiful amount of health benefits. Now, grab your favorite coffee mug and enjoy your safe amount of your caffeinated beverage. Thank you.